Hi everyone and welcome to today's lesson where we'll be looking at smartphone photography. Now to start with, when we think of professional photography, we often think of very expensive DSLR cameras and multiple lenses. However, with the way technology has developed, it's very possible to take amazing photographs using your own smartphone or tablet. Today we're going to explore this with a lesson from professional photographer Lee Aspland. For your preparation, there's a few things you're going to need. Firstly, a smartphone or a tablet, and you'll need this to capture the photographs. But make sure that you're familiar with how to use the camera feature and what other features there are that you can use. And this will differ between models. You will need a suitable space to work in. Today, we'll be moving around either indoors, outdoors, or both. So make sure that you've got access to the areas you will need. And finally, you will need a clear view of the video. You will be exploring the features of photography as explained by Lee, so make sure that you watch the whole video and pay attention to his hints and tips. At the end of the video, I will then show you the success criteria and explain what you need to submit to the assignment. The task for today is very simple. We're going to develop our photography skills by using the hints, tips and instructions given by professional photographer Lee Aspland. I'm now going to pass you over to his video. Make sure you watch the whole thing. And at the end, I will come back to explain what we need to do following his instructions. Hello, I'm Lee, and this is Creative Smartphone Photography. I am a photographer and I use quite a lot of different types of cameras. One of them happens to be my smartphone because it's always with me. So this little device is fantastic, isn't it? It can be in your pocket the whole day, always available to create photographs. And maybe the photographs you take with your smartphone are okay. Maybe one or two of them are good. What we're here to do today is to help you to create better smartphone photographs, possibly even great smartphone photographs. So I'm going to give you 10 tips in a moment, and those will help you to create better photographs, possibly even great. And then at the end of that, there's a little fun photo activity where you can create five photographs to illustrate five topics, one photo per topic. More of that later after this slideshow on 10 smartphone photography tips. Here we go. Okay, let's go with smartphone photography. Firstly, a little question. What do you think is the most important part of the camera? What do you think? The shutter? Maybe the lens? Maybe something else. What do you think? No. The most important part of the camera is you. Because you decide which way to point the camera and what to point it at and how close you're going to get. You are the most important part of the camera. So let's talk about improving your ability to point the camera. We're all photographers now. We've all got a smartphone. But here's 10 tips to help improve the quality of your photographs. Firstly, clean the lens. You probably know this. It's dirty all the time, isn't it? It's in your pocket. Just take it out regularly. Give it a clean with a little bit of a clean cloth. Don't tell anyone, but I usually use my t-shirt. So clean lens equals sharp photos, no blurriness. For example, I got down really close here to this leaf. I was attracted by the shapes of the skin of the water, known as the meniscus, around the edge and how it reflected the sky. Which brings me on to number two. Do not zoom. I got really close to that leaf, didn't I? I used my feet. I got on my knees, actually, and got close. Don't zoom or get close or crop after. Yeah, I'll talk about that in a moment. 
So here we go. Here's a photo. You might think that's reasonably close, but maybe you've created and you thought, I could get that a little bit closer. I'd like to crop it round about there. Now you can probably do this on your camera phone so that it looked like that. But for the next point, number three, I'm gonna suggest you get an app to help you post process your photos. Post processing means the work you do after the photo has been created to make it look even better. I use something called Snapseed. The main scheme, uh, screen looks like this. Okay, so you can see there's lots of options there. There's actually another row below the bottom one you can see of things to do. But the one we're talking about here is crop. There it is, and it's on this app there. It does lots of other things. I'll come back to that in a moment. Here we go. Here's a photo I took using my phone of some Welsh poppies. And what I did in Snapseed was add it, a reverse there. So I reversed the photo, rotated it, and then put one, the first photo, on top of the second photo. It's called multiple exposure. And then made it brighter, redder, and squarer. And I got this. That's now uh, my screensaver on my phone. Just a, a very attractive pattern created in Snapseed. Number four, possibly one of the more important ones, turn airplane mode on. Why? Well, there's a lot of distractions from your phone, isn't there? You could decide you're out with your camera and you get a message, you get uh, tempted to look at your Facebook account. Don't do any of those things. Really turn your phone into what it is going to be, just the camera. Switch airplane mode on. Number five, learn to use it. Click on the camera icon and look at the options you've got there. Play around with them, see what you, they do. Practice, see what you can do, create with your camera. Number six, avoid using the flash. Now you've probably got it turned on auto flash at the moment. If you look at the screen, when you've gone in to look at the camera icon, you might notice something like this. This is my phone. And as you can see, I've got some choices there where I can turn the flash off. It's usually on the middle one next to it there with the A, that means automatic. That means the camera's deciding when to flash. Don't do that. You decide when you want to use the flash. Most of the time you don't need it. When you do need it, turn it on on the right hand of those three little icons. Number seven, learn how to see a photo or see an opportunity for a photo. What's all that about? It's coming in a moment with my friend, Mr. Frog. You like him? I love this photo. <laughs> okay. Number eight, learn photography composition basics. Now, I could write a book on composition. Lots of people have. I'm not gonna do that. But I am going to share a couple of tips with you in a moment about photography composition that will improve your photographs. Number nine, find interesting light. Well, photography means light drawing. Drawing with light. Photography is all about light. How do you find interesting light? Well, here's a little tip. Late at uh, sunset or at sunrise, the light turns golden, yeah? This is Caswell Beach in Swansea. Beautiful light reflected off the sea, making a gorgeous color scene. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, create photos that are personal to you, that you are interested in. Because if you're not interested, nobody else will. Mm. But hopefully if you're interested, mm. other people will be. So share something mm. of how you see the world. For example, you wanna know how my hair got to be how it is? Mm. There you go. Four photographs mm. that tell a story. Mm. These were all taken with my phone. 
They were then put together in Snapseed and then shared on Instagram, telling a story of my crazy air day a few Saturdays ago. There we go, 10 smartphone photography tips. Clean the lens, don't zoom, get an app, turn airplane mode on, learn how to use your camera, avoid using the flash, learn how to see a photo, learn photography composition basics, find interesting light and create personal photos, or tell a story or share an idea. Okay, as promised. The frog. Let's look at how we can see a photograph because looking is a gift. We can all look, but seeing is a power, said Mr. Jeff Burner, a photographer. Here's an example. You decide where to put the frame. Cameras frame what they see in this little rectangle, don't they? But you decide where to put it. So I created this photo at a wedding. The boys on the on the wall two of them smelling the rose and the other one looking bored in the middle but what do you think the girl is thinking is she bored is she on her own is she lonely things like that yeah but because i put the frame there what you can't see she was actually talking to another girl opposite her on the other side of the steps but i've created a different story by where i put the frame also Smartphone lenses are super wide, wide angle lenses that's called, so you get a lot in, so don't be too far away. I'm actually about three foot away here using a little selfie stick to create this photo of all of the huge trees. But look, although they're wide angle, you can also get super close. They're pretty good at focusing close up so I can get super close to this leaf and still have lots of other leaves in the photograph. But how can you see a photo opportunity? Okay, so there's a little technique for you, something you can think about when you're out with your smartphone camera. You arrive at your garden, let's say. You're going into your garden or your backyard or your front yard or a room to take some photographs. You arrive there. You take a look around, you breathe a little, you walk slowly, just seeing what is there. You try not to get in your head. Your head's telling you, look for a photograph. Your head's telling you, you're hungry. Your head's telling you to check your Facebook. Tell your head to be quiet and just look at what is there. Walk slowly around the space. Don't look for a photo though. Just notice what you can see and then the photo will find you. Something will stop you. And when that happens, just rest and look at what is there. Just look at it. Do you have to get closer? Should you go higher, lower, right, left? Just look at what is there. What made you stop? And then create the photo. There you go. Simple. Arrive, walk slowly. Don't look for a photo. Let the photo find you. Rest and look at it and then create the photo. Let's have a little look at photo composition now. We know how to see. So that technique you can use when you're out creating your photographs. But what does photo composition mean? Well, here's my simplest definition. Arranging the things within the frame in a way that looks the best that it can. Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier, photography composition is a huge topic. So we're going to concentrate on a few things. Firstly, your point of view is the most important thing. Where you stand, sit, lie, climb up to, etc. is the most important thing because that controls what's in the frame. Move your feet. Many people are lazy. They just take their photo from where they stood or sat. You move around, move your feet, get closer. Don't be scared. Right, we're gonna concentrate on one. You know that you've got to change your point of view. 
And then what are you going to look for to put in the frame of these seven things? And they're called elements of visual design. They're not just relevant to photography, they're relevant to all forms of art, particularly those that use a frame. Drawing and painting as well, for example. Here we go. Number one, shape. So in nature, the shapes tend to be organic, soft, rounded. This was a leaf, and I noticed that when I got down low, it changed its shape into a heart, a yellow heart against a grey background. Pop. Fantastic, yeah? Shapes that are man-made tend to have straight lines. This bus that I got close to, to create this kind of abstract London image, is all straight lines, rectangles, squares. So the shapes, they tend to be organic if they're in nature, or straight lined, rectangles and squares, if they're human made. So that's shape. Form is quite similar. Shape is two dimensional. What is form? Can I hear you? Yeah, three dimensional. So not only does it have height and width, it has depth. So these tulips, you know these tulips aren't flat. You know they have shape, they have depth. So how you use the light helps to create that idea in the viewer's mind that something is not flat even though the screen you're looking at is flat now it has depth so that's form there you go say for example not flat vegetables are they no <laughs> and then lines now i saw the opportunity for this photo from a long way away and i walked closer because i could see that the edges of the steps created white lines pointing through the photograph to the little man top left hand corner who's walking away from me in the frame. So I've used the lines on the steps to point the viewer at the subject, which is the little man down the way. But lines can also exist. This example is some uh, a location in London where man-made lines can be used to point at the people in the photograph who are actually in the bottom corner of the frame, which is quite unusual, but the lines all point to them. And then you can use colour. Mr Frog, he's here again, telling us that pink or orange, for example, like his eyes, goes really well with green. Pops. The colour pops. So certain colours really work with each other and you can learn which colours work well with each other. So the, you may remember from your other lessons, the three primary colours. Do you remember what they are? Yeah, red, yellow and blue. And the secondary colours are green, orange and purple. That's right. So every primary colour has a secondary colour that really sets it off. Green and red, for example. So that's colour, and here we are. I'm using different shades of the same colour here to illustrate this photo of me with my hound. Uh, and we've got blues and greens that are similar shades to make the photo feel calm and harmonious. And the dog looking at the camera posing. <laughs> okay, the next one is texture. So uh, a lot of uh, surfaces have texture and that is uh, intriguing. So for example, by getting close to the stream, you got the difference of the sand and the water creating texture. Pattern is the sixth one. These are uh, a man-made arrangement again, straight lines, uh, Father Christmas is on offer, but in nature, patterns tend to be more beautiful, don't they? This is one of the first photos I ever created with my phone, and it's taken really close, as you can see. You can see the droplets of water. It's coped really well, hasn't it? 
but a nice organic shape and lines and then therefore a pattern finally number seven space as you can see this girl has something to jump into has got space to jump into also she actually frames the other three girls underneath her who are running into the sea so space use space in a photo to hold the subject of interest for example at a gig here this guy you know he's looking at a crowd you can't see the crowd the hand that's in the space there gives you an idea there's more people behind them and he's looking at something so you know this is a gig and you know that it's busy by using space so there we have seven elements of visual design shape form line color texture pattern and space seven things to remember do you think you can do it i think you can let's have a little test which of the seven elements of design are used in these next two photos okay so this is a scene at one of my local parks we got a bit of color there obviously haven't we but a blue sky setting off the shapes yeah we've got shapes there and forms as well they're really more shape like though we know that they've got depth they're more shape like because they're silhouettes so we've got the pigeons we've got the tree palm tree and we've got the fence sharp clean lines but pow you really see what's going on there don't you what about this one what which of the seven elements of design are being used here can i hear you say pattern yep there's the pattern there what shape though do the girls skates all make if you drew a line around the edge of their skates what would you have and this is what drew me to create the photo i thought i could see a map of australia so it's a shape that drew me to it and the pattern and there the way the the lines of their arms all point to the middle yeah that makes an interesting photo and that i to take that photo I got up high, I stood on a chair and then put the phone over the top of them. Hello again. Okay, so now you have 10 smartphone photography tips. All we need to do now is put them into action. See what you like using them and creating some great photographs. So you need to go to an outside space for this and I'm going to give you a little photo activity to do. So I've come out to my outside space. You don't have to do it outside, you could do it in the house as well. Or if you have the possibility of going out, you could do it in your local park, the beach, whatever. But try and do it in a small space to start with. So the photo activity photo fun activity five photos five topics you remember one photo for each topic no more no less so you finish with just five photos and I'm gonna uh, walk you through what it's like to walk around a space seeing what is there but not looking for a photo waiting for the photo to jump out at you so I'm going to take my smartphone and video that process so they're going to be kind of my eyes of what I see as I walk around my outside space my deck so you'll see all that in a moment but let's just quickly talk about the five topics so first up this is me which is a kind of selfie but it does not have to be face it could be your feet it could be another part of your body it could be part of you it could be a reflection of you in a window it could be the shadow of you in something or it could even be something that represents you like a doll or a, a little model or something you love anything or it can be a you but don't 
Don't just do your standard selfie. Get creative. Come up with something really imaginative. So that's number one. This is me. Number two is view from my window. So you choose a window in your house and you create a photo out of that window. Pretty straightforward, you might think. But how can you be creative? What might be the view? Could you influence that anyway? So for example, the uh, entrance to my deck here is two glass doors. I could take a photo through those and I could have something on my deck already that would be in the photo, like other people or a dog or whatever. So think about the view from your window. That's number two. Number three is lockdown love. Something you love about being in lockdown. Now if you're viewing this after lockdown and you're out and about, then it could just be something reflecting back on what it was like and what you really liked about being in lockdown. So that's number three, lockdown love. Number four is Wales, where we are now. A photo that represents Wales for you. That's an opportunity for you to be creative. And finally, number five, fun. What does fun mean to you? And how can you illustrate that in a photograph taken in and around your house? Okay. Those are your five topics. Now I'm going to take you around my deck and show you the process of looking for. And not looking. No, not looking. Oh, I'm looking for a photo. What did I say? Seeing what is there and waiting for the photo to come out at me. See, I know what I'm doing. Goodness. And I still make mistakes. That's okay. It's difficult. It is difficult to do what I'm suggesting. So, here comes a little tour. Okay, here we go. Quick tour of the deck. Talking about what it's like to just walk and see the possibility of a photo. I've started inside, and I'm actually on my knees, because when I walked up to this space, I saw that I could create a photo from a window. So this is the view through my doors, glass doors, with a camera, and I've come down low, so you can see the camera silhouetted against the sky. Okay, a little wander through the space. Let's see what we see. Walk through, noticing what is there. What's this on the floor? Ooh, a skipping rope. Now, look at that. If I created some dynamic lines, the blue curvy shapes show up really well against the dynamic lines of the deck. Interesting. Walking on, and then, oh, what's this? Aha. Uh -huh. Maybe with the blue curve and the little flowers, maybe something that's there. I'll come back to have a look at that. And of course, I've got a lot of sunshine now. Oh, look, creating shadows, interesting shadows, something else to play with. Different shapes, patterns, and textures there. Walking through, seeing the bits I've left on the floor after I finish filming. And then what about me? Aspects of me. There's my slippers. There's my feet. All of these could be representative of me. In this darker space here, I'm going to turn around quickly. And see what I can see back in. Oh look. Shadows as well. Excellent. So walk around your space. Notice what is there. Notice the view. Look, don't forget to look up. Ooh, black line. <laughs> okay, don't get too excited. Just notice. Mm, silhouette of next door scaffolding. Uh, reflections again of me. Well, look at that. Okay, there we go. That is seeing a photograph, not looking for one. Right, I just wanted to show you four photographs that I created on the deck using the seven elements of visual design. 
Here we go. View from my window of the deck. If you're going to turn a photo, make sure you do it dynamically like this. This has created several triangles. Can you see? And makes the colors and shapes a little bit more interesting. Here is the view we saw earlier of my skipping rope and a triangle again of shadow, which will be a theme in these couple of photos. The dynamic lines of the deck that highlight the curvy lines of the skipping rope. Something similar going on here, dynamic deck, curvy pot, blue pot, color works well as well, yellow and blue and red, all primary colors against the rather grayish beige deck. And finally, me, shadow, thought I'd convert this one in Snapseed to black and white, following the theme again with a triangle of shadow and the shadow of me, obviously, creating the photo. That's it. On we go. OK, to have finished. You've seen how the process works. What you've got to do now is create your five photographs. OK. Any questions? Uh, sorry, I can't hear them. Five questions, five topics, and then create just those five photos. No more, no less. And if you can, try not to delete any. Try to create the photo first time. So really think about your framing, your point of view, those seven elements of design. Yeah, do you remember them? Shape, form, colour, line, pattern, texture and space. Try and incorporate that into your photographs. OK, good luck. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've been Lee Aspland. This is Creative Smartphone Photography. I hope you found that video really insightful. I know I picked up a few hints and tips there myself. Now, following Lee's instructions, you will need to upload one photograph for each of these subjects. This is me, a view from my window, lockdown love, whales, and fun. But aside from this, you will also need to provide a small written explanation about your photographs, discussing how you set them up, why they are relevant to the words, and how you were creative in taking them. So just a short paragraph for each explaining your thought process. Lee has already gone through the success criteria, but I'm just going to reiterate it. Firstly, creativity. I have been creative in my approach to the five subjects. I haven't taken simple photographs that were easy to do, so this could be something like the simple selfie. I've really thought about what I wanted to capture and tried to make my images unique. Following the 10 tips. I have followed the 10 tips given by Lee Aspland and tried to use different features of the smartphone camera to create something special. And explaining the thought process. This is an additional one from me. I have taken five separate images and annotated each to explain my thought process and the development of my ideas. I have also explained which of the techniques I have used and why I used them. So remember, this should be part of your annotation at the end. And the annotation key points, very similar to the ones we've gone through before. Firstly, what have you created? Don't forget to write what you photographed and why. Remember, there's always a reason for your composition and choice of subject. In this case, it's linked to the words you were given. How did you create it? So think about the steps you took. What was the process? Once you found the subject, what did you do? What techniques did you use and why did you use them? What was successful? You'll probably take more than five photographs and pick your best, but it's always important to point out what you've done well, especially when you're developing a project. So this should link with a technique. Have you used shapes? Have you thought about having multiple objects in and out of focus? All these sorts of things that Lee explained in his video. And then how could you improve? Again, don't be too critical, but be honest. Which areas were you least happy with and how could you improve them? Try to be as specific as possible. 
For submission, it's the same as always. When you've completed the lesson, you'll need to upload your photographs to Teams. So that's five different photographs. And don't forget to photograph your written work too. There should be a paragraph that goes along with each photograph. If you have any issues with this, please contact me through Teams or via email. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun taking these photographs and exploring the settings of your smartphone. I look forward to seeing your results and good luck.